Hey what's up guys, today we have to talk about Ningguang, a powerful Geo DPS who actually got better in this patch, or rather better with a new Spiral Abyss, as they added these annoying dog enemies that can be very difficult to fight but that do actually have a Geo weakness which makes Ningguang a much better option. Because of that, a lot of people are turning to Ningguang and other Geo carries, which is why I think it's important for me to release an updated guide on Ningguang since so many people want to play her. On top of that, she got some new options, both in weapons and sets, that I want to cover in this video. So what I'm going to be doing is covering everything you need to know about Ningguang in as much detail as possible without wasting any of your time. With that being said, I want to remind you guys that I do stream most nights on Twitch, link in the description if you're interested, and with that being said, let's get into it. Now as always, with every guide video I make, I'm going to start by giving you guys a rundown on how to play this character and how their kit works. With someone like Ningguang though, who's been in the game for a while, I'm always unsure in how much detail I should go, as a lot of people already know how Ningguang works, but what I'm going to do is give you guys a quick recap on her abilities, but also cover some advanced tips, animation cancelling, and playstyles that you need to know to play her efficiently. So so that I can hopefully help as many people as possible with this section. First of all, I want to specify that Ningguang is a character that does a lot of damage through basically every part of her kit. Her elemental skill is a Jade Screen that has a very good scaling, does a lot of damage, and will also generate some Geo Particles for you. This Jade Screen casts a barrier that's a Geo Construct, and that can also block enemy projectiles and stuff, which is kind of niche, but it's mainly used for its high scaling. And then your elemental burst, Star Shatter, is really good. It does a ton of damage based on the amount of gems that you create. And the main thing you need to know with this ability is that you will generate more. You'll deal more damage, generate more gems, if you use your burst when you have a Jade Screen active. Because of this, you always want to use your skill first and then your burst, as it will just increase the overall scaling of this ability. Something to keep in mind with her Star Shatter though, is that it is single target, and so while it does do a lot of damage, if you're fighting multiple enemies, it can be annoying uh, using this burst, as it will focus one, but that's when other characters or other abilities can come in. To go into a bit more detail, your burst fires six gems initially, and then if you cast it when a Jade Screen is active, it'll fire another six by shattering or destroying that Jade Screen that you have. I do want to point out that some Sometimes her burst is a bit wonky though, some star jades can like go into the ground or can have weird targeting and some randomness involved, but in general it's a pretty straightforward burst that does a lot of damage. Something else you should know is that Ningguang's charge attacks are really good. Not only is the scaling high, but she also has a mechanic unique to her, which is her star jades. The way this works is that when you normal attack on Ningguang, you'll generate a star jade. After that, when you fire a charge attack with Ningguang, it's gonna fire those star jades as well, which will do even more damage, right? As you can see here, there is this extra damage per star jade that you are dealing and on top of that, her charge attacks will not cost stamina when you are using them with Star Jades. Because of this, while there's different play styles for Ningguang, as a main DPS, when you are spending time on field with her, you do want to make sure to weave in some normal attacks between your charge attacks to get those Star Jades and then fire them with your charge attacks. Also, for your Star Jades, they are counted as charge attack damage, so do keep that in mind. Any set bonus or weapon that buffs your charge attacks will also buff your Star Jades damage. Something else you need to keep in mind is that Ningguang has another passive talent that increases the geo damage of whichever character you're using that passes through the jade screen. And so if you're running a geo team or just for Ningguang herself, you can be sure to run through that jade screen so that your next abilities, your burst, your charge attacks, whatever, will deal more damage with this passive. And lastly, before I move on to some more advanced tips, I do want to point out that for your talent priority, it depends on how you play her. In fact, Ningguang has two main play styles, either as a main DPS where you're on field auto attacking and then just using your supports as backup to buff your Ningguang or to deal off field damage as well. In that sort of traditional DPS sense, you want to be maxing your normal attacks first, and then your burst, and then your skill. However, if you're using Ningguang as a burst support, or in a quick swap team, which is how I play her, where I'm constantly swapping between characters, using my Ningguang, yes, to deal a lot of damage, through her skill, her burst, and some charge attacks, but not spending too much time on her, not doing too many normal attacks, in this instance, your burst can actually be your most important uh, talent to level, and then after that, your normal attack and your skill are both important to level. If you have your 6 constellation, I would advise getting the normal attack up first as this increases your charge attack and star jade scaling and if you're not c6 then going for your burst and your skill and then your normal attacks and in case you're confused here's a recap on the screen as your talent priority heavily depends on how you play her also regarding ningguang's animation canceling first of all to make her attack faster with her normal attacks this is the normal attack speed but if you hold your w key or just forward right as you can see i'm attacking much faster now this is me holding my w key and then this is me letting go of it as you can see the attack speed drastically changes now regarding your charge attacks though this is where things can get a bit more complicated. In fact, generally what you want
want to do is just hold W during your normal attack. And then when you're casting your charge attack, when the animation starts, you can let go of that W key and then hold it again for your next normal attack. Now, the reason why some charge attacks like the two I just did can go out at different speeds is because, and this is probably the most misunderstood thing with Ning Wong, is that her normal attacks have different ways of being casted. As you can see, she can shoot it either by spinning around like that or from her left hand or from her right hand. And all three of these have a different casting time that will make the charge attack after either come out faster or come out slower. This is why Ning Wong can feel a bit clunky or weird to play and why you might notice some inconsistencies before you actually get used to uh, how Ning Wong works and the different animations of her normal attacks. That being said, I will put a link to a more detailed guide regarding animation cancelling in the description down below just in case you need more information. Alright, now regarding Ning Wong's builds, for her artifact sets, it's honestly very flexible and this is one of Ning Wong's biggest strengths. The reason for this is because there's a lot of good two pieces that you can run on your Ning Wong. The best one and the two piece that I recommend is the two piece Archaic Petra that gives you a 15% geo damage bonus, buffing the entirety of your kit making your Ningguang just deal more damage. Once you have this two-piece Petra though, the other two-piece you run with it can honestly be uh, many different options. A two-piece Noblesse Oblige giving you 20 burst damage is very good and can be the best option in a quick swap style team where you're swapping around between characters and primarily using Ningguang for her skill and burst. Something like the two-piece Reminiscence or two-piece Gladiator, right? Both of them being the exact same can also be a good two-piece, especially for a main DPS Ningguang where you're on field auto attacking. And it's also just a good two-piece in general as once again, it buffs the entirety of your Ningguang's kit alongside the two-piece Petra. And so the two-piece that's best for you depends on both your playstyle and the substats you have. Whichever uh, two-piece you have that has better stats on it is what I would recommend. Something I want to add though is that other sets can be very viable. For example, the Bolide set, which I don't have a good one right now, but uh, if you have the four-piece Bolide, there are situations where this can be good, but it isn't always good. In fact, what this set does is when you're shielded, it gives you 40% normal and charge attack damage, increasing your shield strength, which is especially good when you're running Ningguang as a main DPS, spending a lot of time doing normal and charge attacks, and are capable of getting a shield with her, ideally by pairing her with someone like Zhongli. That being said, a lot of Ningguang's damage comes from her skill and her burst as well, to where I don't like Bolide as much, but in certain team comps, certain playstyles, Bolide can definitely be viable if you do have better substats on this set. Also, regarding the 4-piece Reminiscence, while the set is viable, it's not my favorite because it makes you lose 15 energy on your skill, and therefore becomes only really viable as a main DPS like sustained auto attacker and even then it's typically not the best because of this 15 energy that you're losing. In fact, while the set does greatly buff your normal and charge attack damage by 50% for 10 seconds, it does make you lose out on 15 energy which therefore makes it hard for you to get your burst back on cooldown which will lower your overall DPS unless you have energy recharge or just a geo team that can let you use your burst non-stop. Overall it's viable but not recommended. And lastly I wanted to point out that the four piece Archaic Petra, while this set doesn't buff your Ningguang herself because what it does is give a damage bonus to whichever crystallized reaction you pick up. Let's say you pick up an electro shield, it'll buff your electro characters and same with any other element. While this won't buff your geo damage because you can't crystallize geo, the set does have potential that people don't talk about. If you are running Ningguang with elemental sub DPSs like Fischl or Singchu to where you can pick up the crystal on your Ningguang and then buff your off field supports damage, which can actually be good, but it is very niche and not what I recommend to most players as typically two piece Petra with either two piece Noblesse or Reminiscence slash glad is the way to go. Now for your artifact stats, it's honestly super straightforward for Ningguang, so I'm going to make this very fast. For your substats in general, you're looking for crit rate, crit damage, and attack percent, the three ones that give you the most damage. And then for your main stats, you want attack percent on your sands, geo damage bonus on your goblet, as all of her damage is geo, and then either crit rate or crit damage on your circlet, depending on whichever you need more of. Now moving on to Ningguang's weapons, she has a lot of really good options, so basically everyone can find a good one for them. The one thing I want to say, however, is that a lot of Ningguang's options are actually very similar in strength, and so it can depend on your playstyle and artifact stats which one is right for you. Generally though, all 5-star weapons are amazing for her. The Skyward Atlas is an amazing choice overall for the very high base attack, the attack percent on the stat, and the elemental damage bonus on the effect, which makes it my personal favorite for most playstyles as it just gives you a ton of stats. The Lost Prayer is also really good, although this catalyst wants you to be on field a bit longer for the effect to actually stack up, which makes it better for a main DPS. 
And it also gives you crit rate on the effect, which can make it easier for you to get a good ratio. And lastly, for the Geo Catalyst, this one is good too, but it does require you to run a shield, so running Ningguang with Zhongli, and it also just gives you a ton of attack. In my opinion, it's the worst of the three five star catalysts, but it is still a good option, with Atlas being my favorite overall, but Lost Prayer being really good too, and sometimes even better when you're like a sustained DPS. Now, other than just five star options though, Ningguang has some really good four star and even free to play options. The first weapon I want to talk about is actually the Witsith, because at high refinement and depending on your playstyle, this can be one of the best catalysts for you and potentially even the best. In fact, when you want to do one quick rotation, one burst rotation, the Witsith can give you the most damage inside of that rotation. The problem with the Witsith though is that while the effect is really good, one of the three buffs that it gives you is pretty useless. So if you don't know what the Witsith does, first of all, it has really good stats with a crit damage of 55% at level 90, which is really, really good. Then the effect can either give you attack percent, which is great, elemental damage, which is also great, or elemental mastery, which for Ningguang is useless as it only makes your crystallized shield stronger. These buffs last for 10 seconds and can occur once every 30 seconds. And so this book is insane for buffing your burst damage and for team comps where you're swapping constantly while getting the elemental mastery sucks. Overall, on average, this weapon is still amazing and is one of my favorites for Ningguang. I do also want to point out though that Solar Pearl is about as good as Witsith as well. Uh, this weapon is great because it gives you crit rate and also will buff every aspect of your kit except your charge attack pretty much because when you normal attack it'll buff your skill and your burst and when you use your skill or your burst it will buff your normal attacks which just makes it a good overall option. I also wanted to point out that Dodoko Tails with the refinement which is a free to play weapon that we got during an event a while ago that you could refine for free is also a good option as it gives you a lot of attack percent and increases your charge attack damage when you normal attack and also your attack percent. The numbers here are doubled at refinement 5 so it's 32% to your charge attacks and 16% attack which are very good and this weapon is competitive with solar Pearl and Widsith, although once again, it does depend on your playstyle. In fact, while Widsith is still my favorite four star for my type of playstyle, what I use the most and tend to recommend, where you're swapping around with Ningguang, using her as a DPS, but swapping to another character after one complete rotation of you using like your skill, your burst, and maybe some charge attacks. That being said, Dodoko's charge attack increase and attack increase is also very good and will be the better option for a long fight, a sustained DPS increase. And so while Dodoko is the best free to play option, if you compare it to the four stars, how good it is does depend on your playstyle, with it just generally being a good option. And this is partly why it's so hard to precisely rank Ningguang's weapons, as a lot of them are good and similar and depend on you. The one thing I want to say regarding Dodoko versus Solar Pearl, however, is that they are very similar in strength. Solar Pearl gives you crit rate, which can make it easier for you to build your Ningguang. And this weapon also increases your skill and burst damage after you normal attack, which can make it better once again for a quick swappy style, with Dodoko being favored if you are spamming your charge attack, which can be a good idea on Ningguang as a main DPS. And lastly, for the free to play options other than this book. If you have Star Glitter, you can get the Blackliff Agate, although it's not my favorite weapon. And if not, you can use a Blacksmith Catalyst like the Map Amare, which is decent for the effect and the base attack. Overall, as you can see, Ningguang has really good options with amazing five star catalysts that are all very good and usually the best options, and also really good four stars with Widsith, Solar Pearl, and Dodoko as well. A question I get asked regularly is regarding Ningguang's constellations, how good they are, and whether or not Ningguang is dependent on them. Now, while I don't think she's necessarily dependent on them, as especially when paired with other Geo characters, she can do well even at lower constellations. She does have some key ones that make her a lot better, notably her second one, which is a pretty accessible constellation because it's only the second one, and it is very strong. Because of that, I want to go over her constellations and talk about the most important ones. As I mentioned, her C2 is insane because it resets the cooldown of your Jade screen when it is shattered. And as we saw earlier, since your elemental burst shatters your Jade screen if there is one up, what this allows you to do is use your skill, then use your burst, get the bonus damage on your burst as well, and then use your skill again for just an extra cast of your skill, which obviously will make you do a lot more damage in your rotation. Do keep in mind though that for some reason your elemental skill has a bug that makes it only able to generate particles every 6 seconds or so, to where usually when you're doing EQE in an optimal rotation, skill burst skill, your second one won't generate particles unless you wait. Although even despite that, this constellation is amazing and is one that you should try to go for. Another really good constellation for her is her sixth one, as this one gives you seven star jays when you use your burst, which basically means your charge attack will do a lot more damage after and also not cost stamina. And so if you have your C6, be sure to weave in a charge attack after your elemental burst. Seven star jays is pretty huge. So this is definitely a really good constellation, your C2 and your C6 being your two best ones. 
That being said, C3 and 5, especially 3, giving you burst talent levels are also nice, and your C1 makes your normal attacks AoE, which was a pretty overrated constellation as it only makes your normal attacks do some AoE, and your normal attacks aren't the biggest part of your kit on Ningguang, but it is pretty nice to have. Now moving on to Ningguang's teams, it's actually very straightforward because Ningguang is someone who doesn't really depend on too many other characters. The main thing I want to say though is that she does pair very well with other Geo characters, and so having a Geo support, especially a 5 star one like Albedo or Zhongli if you do have them, with honestly even uh, Geo Traveler being viable, can be a really good option as they do provide you with this Geo Resonance that greatly just buffs your team by giving you more shield strength, increasing your damage dealt by 15%, and also decreasing the Geo Res of opponents, which is absolutely huge to both your Ningguang and your other Geo character. This is why I believe Ningguang with Albedo or Zhongli or just Geo characters in general is really good and should be at the heart of your team if you do have any of these characters. On top of that, the Geo characters will generate Geo particles for one another. Regardless of which Geo character you're using, they will all be generating Geo particles, which will help your Geo characters get their burst back on cooldown. Also, in case you're wondering, regarding Ito and Goro, I recorded most of this video before they came out, so I'm just adding a bonus section now since I delayed the editing. Basically, while Ningguang can fit an Ito team because they're both Geo, she isn't the best pick for Ito because he typically has better Geo supports that have more synergy with him, like Goro who buffs his defense, or Albedo who'll generate passive particles and deal a lot of damage as an off-field support. That being said, Ningguang can be a viable option in an Ito team as a burst support option who will deal a lot of damage and can run a more supportive catalyst. Although number one, that won't be a team centered around Ningguang, and number two, it's not what I recommend as much as the other teams I've mentioned, both for Ningguang's teams and for Ito's teams. Other than that though, the rest of your team can be very, very flexible. While I right here am using this Geo Quick Swap team that I'm showcasing in the next section of this video, clearing the abyss with it very rapidly, your team is honestly extremely flexible by basically running, let's say, two Geo characters and then whichever supports you want or need. For example, you'll usually want a healer unless you're running like Ningguang Zhongli and don't need healing. You'll typically want a healer. Someone like Bennett can work really well as he just gives you insane amounts of damage and is just insane in any team. And other than that, you just want to pair strong supports with Ningguang. Someone like Fischl or Sing Chu both give you a ton of really good off-field damage. Someone like Shang Ling, especially if you're running Bennett in a Geo Pyro team, can be good for off-field damage. Someone like Beto with Fischl can also give you that AoE damage that you might be lacking. And honestly, there's just a lot of good options for Ningguang. There's a lot of teams that you can make just by pairing her with ideally another Geo support. And then if you need a healer, I would recommend a healer as well. And then your last character can be a flex character, whatever you need. Do keep in mind though that Ningguang can also be ran as a burst support where you can fit her in most teams by using her skill and her burst, which can be a pretty good option, especially if you have her constellations like C2 and C6. All right, with that being said, this is the team I'm using for my showcase. I'm going to do a floor 12 clear or showcase a floor 12 clear that I recorded on my stream using a Geo quick swap team. I put my Ningguang on a R5 with Sith with two Petra, two Reminiscence. Now in this specific team, two piece Noblesse Oblige probably would have been better as I am quick swapping, but my substats are a lot better on this set, as you guys can see, with a ratio of 63 to 205. Obviously my crit rate should be higher, but I just haven't farmed Petra in forever and my Petra pieces kind of don't have any crit rate. So it's hard for me to get more, but this is still a really good Ningguang. I am on level 7, 10, 10 talent wise, C6 with a four star weapon that is R5 though. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the guide and I hope you'll enjoy the showcase. Let's go.
So yeah, that's about it. Ning Wong is a pretty great Geo carry who I really enjoy playing, especially in the current abyss as Geo is so strong. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments down below. Feel free to join the Discord, sub if you're new. And with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.